Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's Friday, and many of you know what that means. It's Chat Gauntlet Day. We're going to actually draft today offline at mtgadraft.herokuapp.com. I know that's a mouthful, but you can find it in uh, the links in chat, no doubt, soon, and in the links in my uh, YouTube notes. So check it out there if you want to see this website we're about to use. But basically, we're going to draft M21 uh, on a third-party website and export the resulting decks into Arena and then use the friend challenge system to battle each other on Arena. This allows me both to battle chat uh, viewers get to take me on, and uh, it allows us to play in pod. That's not something that Arena has natively right now. If you want to draft with seven other humans and then battle your games out against each other instead of uh, randos in the pool of participants in an Arena event, well, mtgadraft.herokuapp.com is going to be your tool for that. There's, there's, it's a great website. Uh, that uh, allows us to have this excellent experience and experience some pure magic. Although this is this is not as pure magic as some people are going to say, because we do play best of one today. And the reason for that is that uh, if we played best of three, I'd have to cap it at like three matches. We would probably do something more like a traditional uh, draft event where somebody ends up 3-0, three people end up 2-1, three people end up 1-2, and one person ends up 0-3, right? We could do that. But what's fun about today for me is that I get to play everybody who participates. So uh, all seven viewers who took the time out of their week to come and help create content for me here today uh, get a chance to play me on stream, and I love that. And so we do best of one. And then it also creates a best of seven situation where we get to see whether um, chat can get to four wins first or I can get to four wins first. And of course, uh, longtime viewers know that my hair is also on the line. If chat can 07 me today, they get to decide what happens to my hair from the neck up, uh, save eyebrows, which I protected via a 7-0 win of my own against chat. So that's always on the line. And I've also added the additional lure of, haven't got the exact details yet, but basically if chat can get me for five or for six, we'll go get something at the store. We'll, we'll buy a, a bling prize for the uh, free-to-play account we play together on stream as a re reward for chat. So. Uh, let's see if you can get uh, if you can get to four wins chat awesome if you can get to five or six you get something sweet from the store please don't get to seven although I trust you I mean the reason I put my hair on the line is because the worst you can do is get me to uh, shave it all off and regrow it right <laughs> okay I can do that um, anyway oh yeah uh, Robert says uh, uh, check the intro maybe I'll do this Robert uh, I'll I'll do a uh, I'll, I'll clip it and put it on YouTube as a short no ads video that people can check out and I'll link it in the chat. That's a good idea. So uh, anyway, uh, we're going to hop over there right now. I think we're ready to go. Um, I'm also ready to go to cardkingdom.com when I need stuff for my singles. That's the thing I'm missing, right? You all know that I need to mention my sponsor, Card Kingdom, and I don't mind doing it because they are my favorite place to shop for cards. They have all the stuff you're looking for for your tabletop game. Uh, I haven't looked at how they're handling what their stock is for like uh, Jumpstart. People seem pretty into the Jumpstart stuff, and um, I'm wondering if Card Kingdom has that up yet. But certainly, like they're just my go-to. But when I when I need something physical for my Magic game, I start at Card Kingdom, and then I do my due diligence and look around elsewhere. But uh, I keep a lot of credit on Card Kingdom because, as I always mention, they have the literal best buy prices. So I love to um, sell. A I'm a secondary market person, but I still sell cards to Card Kingdom because their buy prices are so good. It is often better for me to just sell to them with no middle person taking a chunk on the sites I sell on or whatever and just sell it to them, you know, it's true. And uh, I often get credit. So I have a lot of store credit there too, and you'll find that useful. Anyway, love Card Kingdom, check them out on my behalf and do it through the panels. The panels are the way to help my stream when you do check out Card Kingdom, so appreciate that. We're gonna hop to left monitor here though. And as you can see, we've got all eight players here. It's a uh, you know pretty utilitarian looking site or whatever, but it does it it does the trick. I, I love it. I love utilitarian sites. I don't need flash. I need function, and this site has the function and looks fine. And um, basically, so we can see who the king is. Gargantuan here has got the crown. So Gargantuan owns the session. That's Robert. And when uh, everybody's re ready, uh, Robert will do a ready check and. We'll jump in. Looks like uh, it's hopping around here. 
Here's the ready check. Good luck, chat. Good luck. Manthrill, alpaca, gargantuan, cheese, flip, tron, and fiddles. Here we go. I feel like Transmogrify also follows me around, but maybe it's because everybody passes it, so I just see it a lot because it's always in packs. What do we got here? We got a Grasp of Darkness as what's kind of jumping out at me is like, unfortunately, the best card in this pack. Um, Black's not generally where people want to be, but I find it hard to take anything but uh, the Grasp here. Uh, th this is a weak pack. And uh, you would take the Mauler. I can't take a upside hill giant over a grasp. Um, Griffin Airy is a build around in the color pair nobody wants to be in. Like I'll take uh, Grasp of Darkness, and uh, uh, if we wheel the Griffin Airy, we, we I, like if we see white black life life gain, maybe I try to wheel this, but I I'm not interested in that as a first pick. So um, yeah, Uprising Airy. Uh, it, it if you're going for upside, I suppose like it just doesn't seem like a that Airy is good enough in the abstract in the format. I mean, how many like this just hasn't done much. Uh, and uprising, I don't I don't want to start with an uprising. I just don't. Um, I'm just gonna grasp and then maybe we end up in green, but I'm not gonna regret taking a premium removal spell even if it's in a color that has been struggling. You think uh, Griffin Airy is a is a blue blue white? So you're just trying to get some random white. You're, you're basically getting all your life gain from white, huh? That's fair. Still taking grass, but that's interesting. Well, Watcher of the Spheres would be an avenue into that deck. Here is another grasp, though. There's another. There's a feat, which is probably just better than grasp in the format. Uh, we could take feet or uh, Tempted Veteran, or just grasp number two and be like, all right, I guess we're the, uh, the, 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 we're gonna be the black deck. Cause also it does, uh, it takes an, another excellent black card and leaves nothing in here. So I think uh, uh, I'm gonna take the second grasp because it matches our first and we can be sending very good signals downstream for a good pack two. And this is a reasonable signal here, although it doesn't mean anything with a rare missing. Um, Pack one, pick two, with a rare missing is literally zero signals because you don't know what color was taken, and it, it all it means is there was a rare better than grasp, which is not uh, hard to come up with, and not hard to come up with in black for that matter. If we get grasp number three, I will both take it and I will then really think about how to prioritize getting into card draw colors, whether it's, um, you know, green actually has some decent card draw, but really if we got a third grasp, I would want to pick up blue and try to end up there. Um, in this case, we can take a stitcher and uh, head towards some possible reanimation, or we can take a shock and just be low down red black removal or a hunter's edge for more removal but i kind of like hedging on the stitcher here i was just saying that if we uh if we get a lot of removal i want card draw uh the reason why you want card draw with a lot of removal um is because like everybody loves removal right removal is great it gets rid of their creatures but it can a heavy removal deck can be a losing deck if what you're doing is uh just naturally drawing one card per turn and you remove the early stuff, but if you just flood out a little bit, if you're the all removal deck and you flood a little bit and oppo doesn't, you're gonna run out of removal, they're gonna still have threats, and then they beat your face in. So when you have a heavy removal deck, you really want looting and card drawing so that uh, you win the attrition war, that, that you won for one, but because you're drawing cards, if you flood a little bit, you're not gonna fall behind and lose to their aggression. So. Uh, I do love Shock, I love the Hunter's Edge, but I'm gonna take the Stitcher because it's a powerful, powerful card. It's in, it continues to cut black. Maybe we get Village Rights on the wheel and it does play into blue 
which is the best color to support an opening of double grasp. Kinetic Augur, a lovely uncommon, not in anything we have yet, but we're not married to blue. We can still consider uh, being red, black, removal dot deck. We can stick to the black, keep cutting it with a Death Bloom Thalid. This is a, a reasonable card. Um, I think the question here is whether any of the uh, non-black cards are enough better than a Death Bloom Thalid to deviate from the core black uh, approach that we're starting with. Alpine Watchdog and Kinetic Augur being the, the really the two that jump out at me here as, as competing with the Thalid. Uh, and yeah, Augur is fine. Uh, Augur does exactly what I'm talking about. Augur is looting, so it helps you get rid of, I'm flooding in my removal deck. Get rid of those lands and draw me some more grasps, right? So, uh, I'm tempted by the auger. I think I'm going to take the auger. It is so much better than the Thalid that it's worth hedging for here. Um, that I'm going to I'm going to hedge on auger. And I know we are trying to send good signals downstream, and cutting the black card would be nice for that. Um, yeah, uh, I should should mention this. This is up there. Like, I don't think it, it's just below. Like, my my ranking would be like Thalid, one of these two, or that, or just the fixing. But I think Augur is just good enough to take here. Um, I get you, and maybe I'll regret not having that Thalid by the end of the draft. But I can um, stand by my reasoning of hedging for it. There, we might not play it, and we might wish we had something else. But we had our reasons there. We can take an imp to continue uh, towards this. I kind of like Palladium Mirror. Uh, the blue hasn't really been flowing, although um, there's a Capture Sphere also. Swift Response and Capture Sphere for the removal. One thing I like about the mirror here is that if we do end up in uh, blue-black reanimate of some kind, it's really nice to be able to hard cast the blue and black commons and uncommons that you're drafting to reanimate. And Palladium Mirror really helps with that. So you can um, you can ramp out to a seven drop pretty easily if they don't kill it. And the cost of hedging there is uh, getting into a new color with Swift Response, a decent two drop in Fetid Imp. This is a fine, fine card. Uh, and then Capture Sphere, obviously good removal as well. But we have some good removal already, and hopefully the black, uh, we end up as one of the few black players at this table. Hopefully, we'll see. Uh, but I'm going to take the mirror on the strength of its role in um, in a possible reanimator where we could be headed. Uh, but then I see something like Geyser still here. Houndmaster still here just breaks my heart. We're going to get rolled by whoever is in the Houndmaster seat here. Uh, Geyser, though, plays back towards here. Or we take Lurker if we thought we would, if we're trying to find the, uh, the reanimation lane. Yeah, Deacon, I'm sad about that too, but I mean, here's how it could be there. None of us started red enough. Like, red seems really open. Um, Lurker really works with the uh, Stitcher plan. Like, Lurker is like a Stitcher pick, and Lurker may be good enough just to take anyway. Um, I think I'm going to take the Geyser because... Augur plus Grass plus Grass plus Geyser is really nice. Um, and I think we can find Lurkers if that's what we end up doing. This feels harder to get, so I'm going to take it. So here's a Death Bloom Thalid that's coming at a reasonable time for us and supports our black play. So I'm going to take that pretty easily. Dreadmon Spinner suggests if someone went down the green path, you know, that would be good for that. Dreadmon has just been excellent in the format. Getting the fun guy. We're going to have a party with fun guy. Yeah, true. I, I want a 7-0 it, and I think we are unlikely to have the best deck at the table with some of the stuff we're passing here, but 
we we have some uh, tools to win, which is the main thing. Don't love to run a walking corpse, but in this format, you need your twos. We could do worse than that. Steward at one just doesn't quite do enough. Uh, when they get to choose the discard, it just, uh, just doesn't quite get them enough. And they have a turn to figure it out, too. You want the devils... Razor wants the Devils, uh, maybe. I hate the Corpse, but I hate not having twos even more, right? And the Devils is just okay. I think I'm going to take the two. Yeah, Shaman is fine as well, but I'm just really in on the uh, the good stuff for... I guess we take a Traitorous Greed. Uh, we're in the colors where we could end up Steel and Sacking. Archer is a fair... That's where I went, Jinx. Uh, but we're still pack one. I'm going to take the greed and uh, on the upside for the sack. Steal and sack. It'll be fun. Haven't done that yet. Yep. Greed for the greed. Greed for the hedge. I don't know if hedging is greedy. It's usually... Often correct. I shouldn't say usually. I mean, really, one of the tricky parts of drafting is figuring out, winning, figuring out when you're supposed to stick to the obvious colors you have or hedge towards something you might move to. Yeah, steel and sack is tough to come by, realistically. We can take Jungle Hollow in case of Splash or Corpse to keep going on our twos or prismite because we open uh, gadrak every draft uh thanks for the sub hollow is defensible but two drop again continues to just be super important in the format i'm gonna oh i hate passing this dread maw i guess we'll steal it attack with it and then sack it though we'll take a devil's here It's kind of like a five. Um, and let's see. So let's keep in mind our red is Devils, whatever. Geyser, okay, it's solid. Trader's Greed, oh, it could work well with black. Kinetic Augur, really our best red card. My point being, um, we could still end up blue from here. Like if, if we get the, uh, if the Waker of Waves is in pack two, pick one, I probably take it. Uh, here we can take Indulgence. Even indulgence at four in a grindy late game type deck. This is the kind. This is effectively the kind of card attritiony card draw that I'm talking about. Uh, a heavy removal deck needing training still being here is somewhat signally. Two green cards still being here somewhat signally. Frost breath, not likely. Not a, really a good card in the reanimating. Strategy. This is more of a tempo card, of which, you know, Frost Breath has a home in the format, which is neat. It often doesn't. Often blue is just so controlling that you don't you don't want to play this card. Cancel if we end up in blue is fine. Great last pick, really. I mean it's not it's not great. It's a great last pick. Hello, friend! <laughs> Clean living. Clean living. We'll see if this Megalodon comes around. Eliminate, I wish Kate was uh, <laughs> was there. Oh, Tron, hang in there, buddy. Hope we get Tron back. <laughs> yeah, Tron is trying to... Uh, oops, I disconnected. We have to start the draft over as soon as I get a, 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 a Massacre Worm. All right, there it is. I'm just looking at the rest of the pack, seeing what might wheel. Eliminate will never wheel, but I'm curious what will. Sure Strike? Wizardry, maybe? Probably not. Anyway, Worm it up. Worm is so good. 
your opponent's control. It doesn't even hurt your own stuff. You just minus two, minus two your oppo's stuff. Yeah, if Megalodon comes back, that could put us over here in Stitcher. I certainly don't mind the idea of Massacre Worm. Oh, they kill it. Oh, we stitch it back. Oh, we, you know, indulgence it back. Here, we had an eliminate in the pack, in the next pack anyway, so we get to take that nice removal spell. Nothing else here competing with it even remotely. Hobble Fiend on the wheel could help us with the red possibility, the steel and sack. Um, Sky Scanner's nice. I'm not expecting to wheel anything good here. Doesn't look like there's enough to expect a wheel, but if we got Hobble Fiend, that would be amazing. Hey Jinx, if we get uh, 23 excellent black cards, I'm in, but I, I would find, I, I would be hard pressed in a mono black situation, not to say either splash the Stitcher or splash the Augur or something. I mean, there's no reason to go mono black here. Um, we had to figure out what we are gonna do though, and Kerr would help at the two level if we wanted to be red. Uh, hedging towards blue here would mean Reign of Revelation or Roaming Ghost Light. Reign of Revelation is nice in that it helps us uh, find Massacre Worm, you know, and it, it's the uh, uh, attrition -y card draw I was talking about. I don't think I've ever resolved a Reign of Revelation. I'm going to take it. Um, yeah, so Ghost Light is very good. Capture Sphere is playable. But I'm going to take Rain because it helps us dig for Massacre Worm and uh, does exactly what I'm talking about, which is say we can pick up more removal and win a win an attrition game. Card draw plus removal is a nice combo in Limited, and it really makes removal better. Removal is fine, but when you combine it with card draw, you can take over games. Speaking of removal and attrition and card draw, how about uh, playing a Dowser and getting back a Grasp of Darkness. I like this Elder as well, but I'm not going to pass the two-for-one Dowser. Gloom Sower, also interesting because it uh, can go in our ramp slash reanimate, but it's the Gloom Sower is a replaceable seven drop for that, per, for that job. You know, the job of reanimation target can be filled by Gloom Sower, but it can be filled by a bunch of other stuff too. The job of getting, you know, two-for-one-ing Inherent two for one get back removal, that is hard to replace. So we're gonna take the hard to replace card. Kraken or finishing blow. Kinda of want Kraken for our first big end card. Uh, finishing blow is part of the removal plan that we wanna, you know, removal card draw. But we do need some of this action, so I'm going to take the, the big uncommon here. And it's got a nice ability. Yeah, we got Massacre, that's true. I, 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 I shouldn't, yeah. It's not like we're empty at the big end, but I want to get more of this, I should say. I uh, Bottom line, I value this card right now more than Finishing Blow. But I wouldn't mind a blow either. We'll get, you know, one of these is fine. Uh, two for one means I use uh, one card... I, I spend one card to get two cards worth of value. So in the case of uh, in the case of Shipwreck Dowser, I spend one card, Shipwreck Dowser, and what I get out of it is a 3-3 three, three prowess, one thing, and a spell back from my graveyard, two things. So my one card gets me two cards of value. Uh, Devotee is probably better here than the Thalid. Even this incidentally triggering is fine. Uh, we want it certainly more than this rare. I think we're probably done with the red. The uh, blue has been wide open here, this pack. Oh, look, we have a pick. Hobble Fiend, rise again. Hobble Fiend helps with the steel and stack, but we just said we're probably not red, so we're going to take a rise again here. Bring back that uh, Masker Worm for an Encore.
Discontinuity is cute, but not real. I'd rather have a black guard or a cauldron. I don't think cauldron is really for us either, though. Jinxwood cauldron. What do you think? What are we doing with this jinx if we take it? We're uh, sacking stuff to make devotee go off. I just don't think I'm going to have a ton of stuff that we're happy to sack is my concern. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go Blackguard. I hear what you're saying, Jinx, but this feels a little too cute to me rather than just filling out our curve decently. Megalodon does come back. Uh, that's great to see. We're going to take Megalodon. Or we could take Lofty Denial. I, mm, hmm. I was just like, yay. But we did actually pick up this, and we're only in pack two. We're probably going to get access to another six or seven. Lofty Denial is totally playable. Uh, we can get it back with, uh, with Dowser. Uh, we don't have Flyers, though, so it's really only a two right now unless we pick up, uh, fl uh Flyers. I really don't like Rewind. I don't know. I mean, it's to me, it's just a four mana counter spell. You rarely do anything with the untapped lands, so it's kind of like cancel for one more as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm going to pass on the Lofty since I don't really have uh, Flyers right now. Take the Megalodon. Uh, I really don't like this Cage Zombie. I think we take a Prismite. I can't. Yeah, I don't like the Prismite either. We'll take a Zombie, but I, I don't think we're going to play either one of those. Cage is fine, but not good. Crypt Lurker, this is a good spot to pick that up. And the Gloom Sower. Also playable. And you can see what I was talking about with the Palladium Mirror. We did end up in blue, and I'm so happy to have this Palladium Mirror now to get these out a couple turns early. Here's a Lofty Denial that makes a lot of sense. Scoured Barons could help with a White Splash, but Denial's fine here. I can't see hating there when it, when we legit... I mean, this is a legit playable. I mean, we, we might not, but it is playable, so I want to keep it in keep it in consideration. Scoured Barons, anyway. Ageless Insight to start drawing extra. That's okay, but not great. I think we just take another Palladium Mirror here. Uh, passing a lot of sweet stuff in Dragonfire and Mentor. Uh, but I think we're on Mirror. Nothing else here for our deck that's, that's better. Probably not playing the Caged Zombie. Probably not playing the Lofty, honestly. Hopefully only playing like one corpse. We'll see. Glide Master is all right here. Making some fatties fly. Uh, Hunter's Edge and Cultivate are interesting, but we're nowhere near splashing green, so we can't really consider that. I'm just going to take the Glide Master... Would I play Crab in the deck? Where are we at at four? Right now, yes, I would play Crab in the deck. At, we could use a four drop doing that job, but hopefully we find better fours. Probably not doing that either. Peer into the Abyss is not a real card. Faith's Fetters is, and we do have the uh, the Scoured Barons, and we don't really have anything else to pick here. Uh, there's no... Uh, oh, Protégé is playable, but not exciting, although it does do the looting thing I was talking about in terms of supporting removal, although we didn't get crazy on removal either. It's not like we're the overwhelming removal deck. Yeah, Protégé is good, but I'm going to take Fetters on the spec. If we get another uh, 
another white tap land, I will absolutely play Fetters and it will be an excellent card. You don't like this? You just want Protege? Eh, well, I'm going to disagree with Hodge on this one. Also, remember, Hodge, this is in pod. Uh, my, my worst case here is that I'm... Uh, that I don't play this and I've denied uh, a, um, a face fetters to somebody. Opt here. Yeah, opt and village are both interesting. No sideboarding in this one. Triggers Kraken. Um, there's a lot of removal, though, and when you can respond to removal with village rights, it's very good. But I do think it's down to its opter rights, with red being uh, still open and, and uh, someone's getting the hookup in red. Chandra Mountain? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take rights here. Here's a protege I'm in for. Oh, but there's a vessel. Uh, then we have something we want to write and something to reanimate, so we'll take the vessel. Saw the protege and got excited that we had another chance at one, but vessel's good here, and maybe we'll wheel one of these two. Uh, I was going to take the backwater, but Temple of Silence does allow me to play the fetters. So we're going to do that. And as we've kind of had a very interesting week on the topic of splashing and when it's good and when it's not good and what you need, uh, here I'm especially happy to splash. And I'm going to grab this rise again. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to splash because we're looking to go long and we have some looting. Uh, it's much better to splash in long game control than it is in aggro. And we, we tried... Uh, splashing in aggro earlier in the week with mixed success, and we splashed with control later in the week, and it was fine. You still regret the protege? I still think we might end up with one, first of all. Uh, you like unsubstantiate, meteorite, or rise again number three? Unsubstantiate certainly helps get us to the long game, and maybe we don't need three rises? Yeah, this, I think Chad is with me on this one. We'll take the unsubstantiate. Here's that crab that we can decide whether we're playing or not. Not playing anything else here. Unsub, don't unsub. I love my subs. Twenty-nine, twenty-eight. It's probably hopefully we can cut that. Maybe cutting a cancel. Uh, this is where we're just hating stuff. I don't think anybody's doing the shrine thing, or this would already be gone. We'll take a Battlements as a uh, good card for the blue-white deck. That flyer went around. Steal, take a Battlements from the Skies deck. That's true. We can bring in the... Uh, we could bring back... Maybe the... Uh, does Devotee make... 2-2 two, two Zombies better than a 2-1 Flash uh, Temporary Pump? None of these matter. We're not playing this. I think we just take a Fury. Yeah, 
you think corpse is better than guard um even without the zombie lord yeah we can figure it out I'm going to take the Jester over a Crab. I don't think we're likely to play here. Let's get some beef off the table for Red. Read the Tides. Or a Cancel. I've already canceled a Cancel, so I'm going to take Read the Tides. Probably get rid of that, too. A little funky. We'll take a Thrill, or... I'm going to take Revitalize... Thrill is good for the red deck. Revitalize. Um, there's enough interaction with uh, life gain that we saw going around that I like getting the revitalize out of there. And we're not playing revitalize. All right. I'm going to get rid of these lands just so we see our real deck count. And we're looking to oh, cut that. Uh, I can probably cut the Gloom Sower as unnecessary and just really work on these three as our uh, Rise Again targets. Oh yeah, Glutton. Where's the Glutton? I kind of missed it. That's an easy cut. Didn't even see it. Uh, now we have the tougher cuts. I see Wishcoin Crab as a possible cut. No, I like the fetters. Uh, we have uh, we have two splash sources, so I'm going to add a planes and splash this bad boy. Yeah, cancel culture is our deck name, right? You got it. Great deck name. Yeah, indulgence maybe is the thing that should go. Uh, we are trying to get stuff out of the graveyard and put it on the battlefield, not put it in our hand, right? Then we're at 24 with two Palladium Mirrors. But I think we need one more cut. Could be a Corpse. Could be a Crab. I'm thinking Corpse or Crab, but Corpse gets down early and does have Devotee, giving some benefit. And then uh, Crab... Hopefully we're skipping over four anyway and getting our Palladium Mirrors down. Yeah, Crypt Lurker is kind of doing the crab job anyway, right? All right. I like this. This seems pretty good. Let's put these back in. And... Are we ever splashing? We don't... I'm going to put... Uh, we did... So this is nine six three would be our mana base here. I think I like nine six three. We don't really need Glide Master or Unsubstantiate on turn two. Glide Master would be fine, but um, it's okay later. And then everything else is black or colorless that we want. So uh, oh nine six three is eighteen um, seven. 8, 7, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, no, wait, this is 16. So I have one more, right? 13, 14, 15, 16. So I can even go 10. I can go 9, 7, or 10, 6. Do you like 9, 7, or 10, 6? Counting these as black sources. Nine nine seven. Well, then you, if you're saying due to worm, then you want ten six. Like we can go, we can go ten six to make sure we get the worm cast. Actually, I like that because we do have Palladium Mirror. If we want to do something sweet like uh, Massacre Worm on four, we're going to need a heavier contingent of black. So, um, Hand Smoother does suggest we could go to sixteen. I'm not going to do that for a couple reasons. Uh, this deck has things to do with Flood, and uh, between Stitcher and Reign of Revelation, it has things to do with excess lands. So 
Um, I'm yeah, and also it, it hurts on the the splash. So um, I, I understand that greed. I always look to see if I have enough mana producers to justify a 16. Um, but I also think people uh, overestimate and overvalue what the hand smoother, starting hand smoother is doing for you. It certainly does not change your odds of drawing more lands. You know, if you put 16 in, like your odds of drawing lands in a shuffled deck is what it is. So, <clears throat> all right, I'm going to export this. We're going to jump back over here. Also going to get Cardboard Live running. Bring this up. All right. Decks. Boris, I do. How you doing, buddy? Boris. Haven't seen Boris in a while, but Boris historically has dropped in shortly after pre-releases and made it rain uh, codes, because I guess Boris does a lot of physical pre-release and then doesn't have need for all those codes. So Boris has been very generous with codes around here. Welcome back. And we are calling this, um, oh, we had a great name. What was it? Tell me the great name. Cancel culture, thank you. And then we had uh, Worm on the box. And anybody redeem lands? Nobody's going to have to redeem lands because I haven't picked the sweet new ones we just got yesterday because they're awesome. Oh, they were already defaulted anyway. Uh, let's, let's see, we just need to adjust. Um, and it's right. Oh, this isn't right, though. We want... No, eight, nine... Yeah, this is right. But this is wrong. We need that. There we go. Now it's right. Because I added an extra island. Lands were already correct, Ryan. Oh, they were. Uh, Eldra Eldraine lands were bought. No problem. Sorry, I didn't see that. And also, uh, those of you who watched yesterday know it's, it's on my weekend to-do list to automate the... Um, the channel points so that people don't have to remind me so much. Hopefully this is the last day you'll all have to remind me to uh, redeem, to properly redeem channel points. What are you up to, Boris? I don't think your dog is really the one getting the top 1200, Boris. I don't think really. Yeah, sorry, let me get out of this. Um, Deck building here, and then Eldraine lands. Where do they end up? They're like over here, right? Where are they? Where is Eldraine lands? No, it's on the next page, I think. Here we go. So it's uh, this one's pretty. We'll go to the left of left of Avon today for Eldraine lands. Oh, you took my planes out. Why did you? It's like... Suggester, you're not supposed to remove my lands, right? That was weird. Or did I screw it up? Anyway, there we go. Um, I don't know if D hates those on lands. I think, uh, you may be talking about the, um, the, the lands with the weird metal kind of trim. The metal trim lands, I think, are the ones that D doesn't like. Anyway, <clears throat> oh, save and exit. 
Tron is ready to go. Any sentence that starts, why does D? Gotta really ask yourself, do I want to know? All right, there we go. How do we look? Ugh, uh, not much happening early here. Oppo going first, but we are way far from doing anything. I think we got a mulligan this because it's not doing enough early, sadly. Uh, this is better. Double palladium mirror gives us something to do. I'm going to ditch the fetters. Uh, do we have search library effects? I can't remember if we've drafted anything that shuffles or whether we just know that fetters is on the bottom for good here. Tron ended up with that passage we were talking about. Still pretty slow, but obviously not mulliganing this. I mean, if we can keep a mirror alive on turn three, it gets pretty fast now with the second island. Uh-oh, you know it. Always happens. Well, folks, this is going to come down to whether or not a Palladium Mirror here lives or not. Although, the fact that we get Lurker on four if a Palladium Mirror does not live is nice. Naya Aggro is tough, as we saw, <laughs> as we saw this week. It, it, it's, a, it's a real cost to splash. Yeah, white, 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 green splashing Rada. Is that your prediction for Tron? Very funny, Hodge. All right, we really need this uh, Kraken to do its job. Yeah, Malkin could have easily attacked. We're not gonna. We're never trading there. Uh, Acolyte is rough, but Kraken does still block a five-five Pteranodon, which is good. We can also potentially sack the Palladium Mirror to the Lurker to draw a card after we get the Devotee down, get an extra token and card. Hopefully no attacks. I mean, I don't see any good attacks for Tron here. Hopefully the Kraken is stabilizing us and we can uh, do some more stuff. Ooh. Well, I guess Tron is saying they're moving in. So maybe that means there's some uh, extra reach in hand. Maybe a plus one, plus one on all Tron's creatures or a plus four, plus four effect on the Trampler for next turn. A lot of ways uh, this could be explained by Tron's hand but we're going to uh, eat the charger and hope to survive at three. And uh, we are not going to pay here. I don't think. Let's see. Let's figure out what we're going to play. Because we've drawn a walking corpse, and uh, we're going to have five, six, seven mana. Five mana if we don't tap the mirror. And for five mana, we could go corpse devotee or corpse palladium mirror. Actually, I like... Uh, I'm going to decline this and then play corpse palladium mirror or uh, corpse devotee. And then have uh, lots of blockers. Uh, 
Um, well, the point is I didn't want to pay one. I wasn't going to attack. It was just whether or not we wanted to tap the Acolyte for some reason, but the bottom line was no, <laughs> right? And then um, we can't draw on their turn to do some tapping. So it looks like, uh, but Devotee blocks and kills the Pride Malkin and blocks and bounces with the Acolyte. So I am going to um, go Corpse Devotee here. And then, oh yeah, I forgot. Corpse as a 3-2 is even a better blocker, so that's great. This is okay. We are somewhat stable, but again, I'm worried about uh, Tron's attack because it may mean we're just dead here, that Tron has enough reach to finish us off. But if not, I hope we can turn the corner. One thing I like about next turn is that we can tap the Palladium Mirror for two mana, which we use to cast the Lurker to kill the thing. So effectively, the Lurker is like a two mana spell in that way. And then we can activate the Devotee. Heck, we can go next turn. We can go. Um, yeah, we just need to get we need can't cast the Mirror. We go Lurker, activate Devotee is our plan next turn. Tron has some three mana to the face spell I've forgotten about and is just toying with us. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna sack the mirror. So we uh, pay two, two more, play lurker, sack the tapped mirror, draw a card, have three left to uh, to devotee, and if if we find uh, village rights, we might even have devotee with village rights up. Nantuko asks, how have I liked starting with the gauntlet on Friday? Uh, it doesn't really matter to me when we do the gauntlet. What's been nice for me, hat, uh, sorry, hat, I said hat, uh, Nan, is uh, that I, I've reclaimed my afternoons a little bit on Friday. I've, my, my Friday afternoons have become more productive, which has been good for me. I've just been saying hat a lot. Uh, did find a land, so that gives us an extra two to work with. Yeah, that's fair. We could just discard this one. Um, but it was about, uh, whether or not we can do it without the mana. So, um, Dino, like, if we, now that we have this mana, we can imagine leaving this one intact and upright and going uh crypt lurker discard palladium mirror although the thing is we want to debt uh, that's the reason why the reason to do it that way is because we're trying to trigger the devotee um and there's we're still not attacking here so i'm just going to decline we don't need to do that on our, our draw step till we start attacking and we could hold the island for possible looting later um because we don't even need it to execute the plan I think I'm going to start with the island held and see what happens here. Hello, buddy. Boy, maybe we could start uh, attacking. But I still don't see a good... Yeah, we could, like, send in the corpse. We could tap the Tranodon and send in the corpse. But I, I'm not I'm not going to overthink. Like, I think we just wait for the worm here and stay super patient. And I will play the land, though.
Hopefully we see another two or less toughness creature from Tron. Now I'm going to tap because we actually might want to uh, get in here. Swing before worm? Um, I don't know. Oh, funny. Tron's kind of like saying, wah, wah. I think Tron knows that doesn't work. Tron is showing us the, uh, the, the effect he had ready, but that was not useful there. Oh, actually, also, it just reminds me, um, I'm fine with emotes on, uh... And also, this is, uh, indestructible. So that's one reason he did it. So we can send in this and this and swing all says Mike. I don't know about all. We don't want to die in the crack back. Um, and then we're, we're not going to be able to do devotee mana this turn. Yeah, Mike is trying to kill me, I think. Um, and then, but I will leave just three back. We'll send these three. Right, three three defense is fine on this board, I think. Three defenders. Well, we've resolved a massacre worm, and Tron is not dead. This could be a story time for Tron, where he could beat a massacre worm. That would be a, a nice, nice win for Tron if he can find a line here. Traitorous greed, steal the worm. That'd be funny. I think we still live there, but it's not good for us. All right. Yeah, that's true. I could have said sent uh, devotee as the, uh, but I also figured um, the reason I sent lurker was a little more damage. I wasn't expecting to need the devotee to block, but if we had to get the devotee on blocks, we had the. Acolyte to block. So. I do my hair toss, check my nails. Baby, how you feeling? Yeah, sorry, Tron. People were like, that doesn't work. It's like Tron knows that doesn't work. Tron is letting us know how frustrated he is. <laughs> Tron knows that doesn't work. <laughs> Brian uh, 2492 is asking us uh, how we're doing this. This is actually what we did is we drafted uh, over here. I'll bring back up the site and go to left monitor. See, we were over here and we drafted using uh, HerokuApp.com. And Hat is posting some info on it. And then we use the export feature here. We export it over to our uh, MTGA client, and then we play in client using the friend challenge system. It is. If you want to get in on it, if you think this is cool and you would like to battle me sometime, uh, you got to join our Discord. Excellent Discord and hat on it with the link to go learn more. If you want to be a participant in a future Friday, get on the Discord and get to know everybody there. All right, who we got next? I will challenge Fiddles. Two Dreadmaws and he couldn't cat. Oh man, sorry, Tron. That was a frustrating spot. Uh, not 
in today's event, Boris. Uh, but if you want to get in on this for the future weeks, uh, join the Discord, and I'd love to see you across the way on some future Friday. Uh, this is a keep, but it's a delicate one. Uh, we need one more land before turn three. We get two draws to find a land to get the Palladium Mirror down. And then we can maybe power out a Masker Worm, but we need a couple more black sources before that can happen. We'll keep this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let me get into the right place for you. You can't see my opener. Here it is. Pretty easy keep. Pretty easy, but has some obvious uh, dangers. But they are worth the risk. And I'm going to play a Swamp. If we get non-stop Swamps, we want them to get to power out the Masker Worm. No Swamp, but happily, happily, happily getting our third land here. Uh, let's see. What do we want? Wow, this is a tough spot. I mean, we passed, um, we passed Dragonfire. We could drop the Palladium Mirror, and I kind of expect whatever we play here gets nailed. But the thing we really need is a Palladium Mirror. So if, if it survives, it's going to be great. Um, yeah, sure. Stitch, Stitcher survives Shock, so we could play Stitcher to get around. We, we did pass a lot of Shocks. Devotee and Stitcher um, get around Shock, but if we drop Stitcher, we can loot next turn if we don't naturally find land. So I'm kind of on Stitcher over Devotee. Well, yeah, if, I guess if we know they have a uh, dragon fire, then you're giving up the devotee. But what I'm thinking is if they have shock, we want uh, the stitcher out. Uh, but of course... All right, for this turn, um, let's do this and see what happens. Okay. Well, they didn't... Uh, we haven't verified shock or not, but now I'm going to try and catch up with a mirror. Well, did it pause? Oh, it paused. It did. Huh. All right, well, then I'm going to stitch then. And I'm not blocking that, so... If we draw a land and loot to a land, I may just pitch the worm to get back with the rise again. CBL should be up. Oh, sorry, I uh, I need to finish the login process. Uh, here we go. All right, Carbro Live should be going now. Give it a refresh if it's not. So we know about the shock, right? Um, but we can't block that anyway. So we're just gonna say no blocks and take a big pounding here. Ouch, ouch. Great, that is what we wanted to see. Um, kind of makes me wanna just play the swamp and rain. And that's instant. So we can just pass here and really probably get a surprise Massacre Worm they don't even know is coming uh, at the end of their turn. So that's what I'm gonna do. Hopefully Fiddles plays a bunch of weenies to get the Siege Striker pumped up and then we kill them all. No counters, no counters. Please, no counters. Counter culture, cancel counter culture indeed might have to give up the devotee here
Uh, so that's going to be a big smack for 10 plus a shock to get us to 2. But then we get to kill the whole board except battlements. Oh, no, that's... Um, are we just dead? Nice, I think we're just dead. 12 plus the shock. See, I can say good game. <laughs> we know it's coming. Um, let's see, I guess I need to... Draw and discard, and see if we can find a uh, uh, removal spell, right? Because we can still get... Um... Yeah, it could have been feet, except there was no creature out. Certainly, though, we have to uh, draw and discard. Hey, we did it! Yes! Yes! Come on! Uh, I'm going to loot looking for land. Yeah, and with the accidental BM. It was accidental. Um, oh, we could just stitch now for the massacre. Yeah, well, I was going to loot to try and find land to hard cast. Because if, I mean, if there's a land on top, it's way better for us to loot, find the land, and rise again, the massacre. Uh, but... Um, and I'm not going to give him another chance for feet. We're just going to do it right now. Wanted to let Fiddles know that was not... I'm not trying to be mean. I really thought we were dead. I thought he had shock. And we were going to be dead. There's our land. Uh, of course, we can just... Um, rise again right now. That seems fine. I mean, like, what else we do? We could, uh, we could dowser for the grasp. Um... But yeah, we can just ri we just rise again and hold the dowser for another rise again. Yeah, let's check for the block, right? Smart from fiddles to not lose the battlements to that block. Herschel, no block because Fiddles knew what we were up to and expected that Rise Again was a possible play of ours. Exile, well that's going to be a lot better for you. Gotta say. Aha, there's the shock we were playing around all game. Uh, now though, we're still okay. We're just going to, um, I guess, Dowser for the removal. But let's let's see if they're up for blocking now. And because the other thing we do is rain. Now let's just dowser for um, dowser for grasp. Seems good here. Draw seems wrong just because uh, Fiddles is at 12, and by deploying real threats to the board with a removal spell in hand, we really pressure the pressure Fiddles to come up with a defense like right right now, right quick, or he's done for. I'll play this land. Let's, I guess let's rain first. Let's 
see what there is to see. Ditch this island. And yeah, we'll just grasp the three, 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 two, and go. Fiddles has had enough. I do my hair toss, check my nails. Baby, how you feeling? I know the hair was already safe, I just like the meme. That grasp was it. Yeah. Good game, Fiddles. Oh, I just got lucky. I, uh, sorry, again, sorry for the accidental BM. I was like, well, because we totally saw the shock. Like, I was in you should go watch that game, Fiddles. That was interesting. Like, the arena leaked the shock info. And so we had a, we had a mirror. We had a mirror in our opener that we never played because we just figured we'd get shocked. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then I was like, well, given the shock, He's going to do 12 plus the shock, so we're dead. Good game. It's like, oh, wait, wait, I can loot. And then I looted and got out of it. Sorry. All right, alpaca. I'm coming for you. What's it? Uh, the, the epic alpaca. No, that was good. Yeah, you went for the throat, and I had a two outer to not die and hit it. Oh, maybe three. I have an eliminate. So there was three outs, two grasps and an eliminate to loot two. We had a three outer and hit it. You two, see a fiddles. Keeping this. Again, with the swamps, in case we go third swamp, mirror, and then top deck a uh, Masker Worm. Do we eliminate the Glide Master, given that we are pretty busy for the foreseeable future? And it only hits three or less. So, like, maybe we get, uh, maybe we get, an, oh yeah, unsub unsubstantiate, four hour, good call, good call, chunk, remembered one. I think we go ahead and do it just because we, we, uh, we have card draw and Big plans coming up. So I don't know when we're going to resolve this Eliminate if we don't do it now. It'd be, it's going to be many turns from now. And maybe many turns from now, there's going to be a 3 CMC, 3 CMC card that we wish we had killed, had the ability to kill, but I think it's correct given our sequencing intent here. Protégé. Uh, so we have five mana. I think we need to use some of it here on the rain to find more land. And then at least we get to keep a vessel up if they come up with removal. Uh, unlikely we're going to do anything other than rain here, but I really want to find the land drop. There we go. Um, with that extra land, we could... We could get rid of the vessel. Let's just discard the vessel, and we can maybe reanimate that and then keep the lands. Uh, fetters, we'll get there eventually. I mean, we want the, we literally want the vessel in the yard. I mean, that's where it's supposed to live, so it's kind of the perfect discard. I Teferi! I don't remember what this does. Draw a card, then discard. So, fundamentally, a looter on the plus. Then minus three, target creature you don't control phases out. So Teferi can phase out a creature and eventually 
get some extra turns, but primarily a looter and gets to do it uh, every turn. Okay. Yep, Fetters is a good answer to to fairy. Uh, we don't have a lot of blue, so we can't glide master and make this fly. But I do like with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana, we can go one, two, three, four, five. Or we can just, uh, we can't Megalodon yet, so. I just talked about it. <laughs> that was an easy one if you were listening. Um, anyway, we're going to... Definitely get the Thalid down. I think uh, Thalid and Glide Master is correct, because then we can send the Thalid next turn if we need to. We could play both threes, but by playing this two, we set up to be able to pressure to Fairy next turn. And there goes the Thalid, probably. Yeah, Glide Master is good too, although if we draw an island, yeah, island lets us uh, still do something here. So we got a good draw there. And I am gonna go for the, yeah, Glide Master was good. We just, we, we found, uh... found something to do, and we'll we'll still launch the mirror here. Yeah, they could have phased that out after I made it fly, right? Unsubstantiate is a great draw. <clears throat> uh, doesn't quite get us fully there, but I do like, actually it kind of does, because what I'm going to do is we unsubstantiate the skimmer, we make the glide master fly, and then attack with uh, everything at Teferi, and then it's either protege trading for the Thalid or Teferi dying. Uh, there is a pause here on single black that makes me think it could either be the uh, plus one, plus one lifelink death touch thingy or uh, village rights. Uh, but neither of those change our plan. Protege has an ability, but it can't be used right now. So it's not an explanation for... Um... Oh, Teferi is it though? Yeah, Teferi is a good call. Sorry. Uh, Protege, I knew couldn't be it, but Teferi is it, right? Um, I'm going to go full control and start the attack. Still good, they need to trade off or lose Tef. Now wait just a minute. Planes, right off the top. Here it comes, or not. Um.
Well, I guess we go Megalodon now. At least they, uh, Tef can't get at this. Lofty Denial, great. Had to try. Wasn't going to not cast my spells. No fool, it doesn't. I'm not particularly enamored with bringing phasing back at all because of how it does not act like any other rules regarding removing cards from play. It's like, I think that's questionable. But it is on a mythic, you know, it's on a mythic. You can get away with a lot on a mythic in terms of complexity. And it really is, I mean, to, to argue against myself, the reason you allow yourself as a designer the ability to do something as weird as including phasing, which behaves so differently from other remove from play rules in the game, is because it is it is perfect Teferi flavor. If you know the story of Teferi, like, and I don't even know it super well, but I know enough to know that, like, he um, he took his part of Dominaria, his, his continent or whatever, and froze it and hit it so that it would be safe from the apocalypse on Dominaria, right? And then uh, and then he's waiting for the apocalypse to subside so he can bring his thing back safely. So it's very flavorful, but I don't like how it conflicts with everything else going on in the magic rules. Here I'm going to uh, sack this uh, token to get a card. Stitcher is nice. Uh, we can get our Megalodon back with that, hopefully in time to do something about Teferi here. Glide Master. Yeah, we need that imp out of the way. Flying is not really the thing that's going to matter here now. It's the just getting a beefy enough thing to do the attacking or get this vessel done. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and try to continue to put pressure on Teferi. And if Alpaca wants to give up the imp for the Glide Master, I'm in. That's fine. Let's keep Teferi down a little bit. I just don't want, you know, multiple turns to happen here. If we can just find white for the fetters splash, that would that would work too. There's that eliminate we passed. We're really losing to the looting here. Uh, let's be clear. Teferi has looted for Alpaca about a million times. So the uh, card quality that Alpaca has experienced thanks to Teferi has been excellent. Oh no, I'm not even ready for it because I have the wrong thing up. Hold on. Carry on my wayward son. So we have the rise again. What is that going to do for us? Unfortunately, we uh, we do get the, uh, I guess we get this dude. That's pretty good. But we could go for uh, Megalodon for the Hexproof. Maybe that's more important. They have just so much chumping now. I think we're kind of done for. My uh, My feeling about our ability to win this game has... Really shunk. Oh, yeah, I guess we still have the Glide Master to give it flying. Yeah, let's do that, I guess. We need the shark over a 5-5 that can be targeted. Also, Twenty to nine. Yeah, maybe we just uh, mill them out. Maybe that is the way we get there now. We have no attacks. Hopefully, we just find our white. Maybe we can shut down to ferry. We find the white, and then uh, be okay.
But they've sent both their flyers. Ooh, hello. Should have attacked first. I don't know. Um, I didn't think I was attacking. Maybe I screwed that up. I didn't see an attack. Well, we have grasp, so we are not uh, dead, 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 dead. Your friend here is only mostly dead. And we have seven mana, two on the grasp, three to make the Megalodon fly or the Lurker fly. I guess Megalodon has to stay back on D and we can send the Lurker. Or maybe we just don't care about Teferi this turn. Or we go to combat and see what they want to do. Let's first go to combat and see if uh, Alpaca even wants to do anything pre. All right, so no attacks and we go If we go mirror, we don't have grasp and flight. So unfortunately, we can't even cast the mirror here. There's no point in playing it, and they can tap a bunch anyway. So we're going to have to hope their combat math is way off, and the grasp plus a megalodon block get some work done, and if we can just top deck uh, planes, especially, we get to fetters, gain four, and do a lot of work on that front. Yeah, maybe we don't need our flight. Maybe that was the thing. And we'd be better off with Palladium Mirror Grasp. That's a reasonable call, Chunk. I was feeling like we needed to have that possibility, but this isn't really the problem, is it? It's being able to manage the ground anyway. And with a Palladium Mirror, we could do something like consider uh, block Kraken and Grasp to actually win combat against the Kraken. So I think Chunk is right, and we really should have a Palladium Mirror with Grasp out right now, and we'd have a real chance. One planes, two ETB tapped white sources. So uh, we have a two sources that would not allow us to play the fetters the turn we drew it. So that's why I'm rooting for the planes specifically. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think we have to uh, grasp the Kraken and try and eat it with the Megalodon. Take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and hope to untap with the planes, and then we can get four back, play the mirror, you know. Uh, slim outs, but I don't think we can beat a Kraken uh, on on the, the next attack, so we have to get rid of the Kraken now. But that being said, uh, we can even just start here and see if there's anything else Oppo's got going. That's rough. Yeah, how about a worm top deck? <laughs> that would be amazing. One time masker worm.
Yeah, it could have phased out in response, I suppose. Oh, can't do your own. Yeah, all right. Uh, I think we're dead now, but we'll go Glide Master. Let's see, are we dead? Uh, four blockers, five attackers. Not enough to get in the air, though. We need uh, we need two blockers in the air. Well, maybe. Let's see. Um, seven mana, six, five, four, three, two. Uh, we're one short. You know, we're two. Sh yeah, not enough mana. Not enough mana. And phasing removes a black blocker. So, like, yeah, we're just like we're dead in multiple ways, and we're gonna give a <clears throat> no bad manners good game. All right. Nope. That's not the one. This is the one. He's dead, Joe. I'm definitely not still alive. Well, Teferi was given a pretty medium review from uh, Luis and Marshall on the set review, but man, every time I've faced Teferi, it has been an impossible hassle for me, and I uh, I lose to it. Like, that's a lot of card quality there. We lost to non-stop qual card quality from Teferi. Oh, F Stream Deck is great. I'm not really using it uh, to its fullest extent, but it has really helped manage my fun stuff here. Good game, Alpaca. Couldn't stop you. you had you had answers for me every time and that darn to fairy your card quality off to fairy is why you had an answer every time let me loot twice a turn and i bet i'd be in that one a little more robert's up next Gargantuan it is. Of course, Cthulhu, but uh, if you build your deck around that understanding, I think you end up in uh, it's a it's a fine planeswalker. You just have to build your deck for it, right? This is kind of a perfect hand. Uh, I guess we want more land. We'll keep that. And I am just gonna play another swamp here. I guess if we get a um, a mirror off the top, we might go for the hard cast. Tack into this and then start the stitching. That's pretty. Good work, Howard Lyon. Kind of has a uh, Rebecca Gway slash. Uh, I don't know. That's a Gway feel to it that I like. Well, that was our that was our plan, Alpaca. Actually, was to survive until we could deck you, but you just had too much removal. Uh, they could have something. I mean, I think it's like, what do they have? Like, if they village rights to weigh their imp, they could get our Stitcher. But even that would be good enough. I'm not going to do it. They get their block, or they get Robert gets his attack.
Megalodon. Interesting. We're just going to go Thalid here, though. Nothing to get, but we get to loot away the Massacre Worm uh, at the end of their turn and then hopefully untap and stitch it into existence. Yeah, offer a corpse. I know we're going to get it with the worm, but I doubt they're going to trade imp for worm here or for corpse here. So this feels like a... Uh, People say Rebecca Gay? It's got a U in it. Her name is G-U-A-Y. <laughs> I had no idea the, the, the world didn't pronounce the U. I guess you could tell me it was silent and I'm pronouncing it wrong, but I just say the letters I see. I really want Robert to tap out because then we're safe to loot away the Masker Worm knowing we can stitch it back. What we don't want to have happen is that we loot with the Stitcher and in response they cast Eliminate and kill the Stitcher or whatever. Did you, Vargan, you say apparently they're incorrect? Have you, is it, is it silent? Is it B Rebecca Gay? Because I would love to pronounce her name correctly if that's how she does pronounce it. That's why I'm, I don't pretend I know how it's pronounced. She could tell me it's pronounced Scotch Tape and I'd call her Rebecca Scotch Tape. Hope when we get to massacre before this dryad got out of hand, uh, got out of hand. But um, I'll offer this. I, I certainly expect them to do something else here, but I want them to spend their. I want them to tap out and uh, do whatever here. This is fine. Spend it, Robert. Spend it. Because now I'm free and clear with the Massacre Worm, which is worth it. And uh, to make that trade, Robert had to play something that's going to die to the Massacre Worm anyway. Rights is interesting. So we're going to do pitch the Massacre Worm and rights away this uh, sap. Oh, nice. Uh... I'm nicing because we got Eliminate, which takes care of the Dryad, which is the only thing that doesn't die to the reanimation. I'm going to do it right now. Yeah, Dowser gets us village rights, which isn't that great. Uh, hopefully we will get back Eliminate instead. Not next turn, though. Ideal draw would be like a four drop that we can cast along with this Eliminate. Yeah, Dowser's not worth it yet. We want to get something better. Mike, you're so funny. Like, it's like a third of the time you try and work me over with your advice, and then two thirds of the time you can't help but tell me the accurate line because you can't help it. <laughs> it's just like, wait, is this Mike trying to get me or is this Mike saying correct things? Oh, yeah, this is Mike saying correct things. Okay. Just trying to add to my mental juggle. I know what he's up to. But oh, whatever, hair's already safe. <laughs> uh, 
Vessel is interesting, but not great here. Uh, ideally, we'd loot that away. We've already done that thing with the stitcher, so we'll just play the vessel and swing with it, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm going to eliminate the dryad or try here. Looks like uh, maybe Village Rights at least gets Gargantuan some cards here. Because uh, that was a blocker? Was it tapped? I thought it was untapped and ready to block. Maybe I maybe I misread the board. If it was untapped, that's why. I didn't want it to block. They may have gone for the two for one, sure. I sure like that line, though. Rather than uh, give him the chance to not do that. Indeed. No, uh, we got lucky. It was pack two, pick one after we were a heavy black. Good, clean living, Hodge. Clean living. I know Robert's coming back shortly, but I'll GG him there, too. It's like, uh, Meanthrill is next, and my record is behind. We're at 3-1 now, right? Yeah, deck was okay, and then we packed two, pick one, a Masker Worm in our colors, so... <laughs> not... Uh, not the worst pack two we've ever had around these parts. I don't have a deal with the creator of Heroku, but I may look into that. That's a good idea cheat on chat every Friday and just crush, crush, crush. I'm in. Nice. A little curve out here. And what are they going to do? Block the vessel? Like, this is unblockable lifelink for the whole game once we get a devotee down. Do some land as well to help us get to that Kraken. Right on. Uh, there's no green instants that matter here. We'll devotee and pass and then uh, start suiciding Vessel next turn when we can actually make the zombie if they block hey buddy how you doing I uh, can't activate glide master without giving up our devotee chance I'm just going to send in Vessel for sure, but we can also just um, keep sending in the Glide Master for that reason as well. Just, uh, I wish we were a trade though. I'm gonna hold, I'm just gonna send in the Vessel. Vessel can be the unblockable thing here.
Yeah, the O3 is good against us, isn't it? We still get lifelink though, which makes it still a good attack. Um, I'll can, next turn we can absolutely do the Glide Master thing, but next turn we can attack with the Glide Master and still have the, uh, we can make it fly. Like, flying is good. Like, I, I don't want to give up the Glide Master, even though it is upgrading it to a 3-2. It upgrades power and toughness, but not activated abilities. Making a flying 6-5 seems cool. Yeah, I guess it doesn't even matter against the spinner. But eventually, I mean, flying the Masker Worm into the spinner sure matters, right? I just mean flying a long game, flying is good and maybe not necessarily worth that trade off here. Nice. Temple of Silence here gives us hard cast Masker Worm next turn. Um, Village rights we will leave on top two. That seems fine. We can use that to sack the vessel and get zombies if we want. But again, we're in a spot where if I want to get the devotee activation, um, that's not going to happen. But I will send in the vessel. I'll keep sending this in, and if they want to take, uh, give us one life link, that's fine. get wrecked i mean so far the masker worm only gets one thing here but we have set them up for it nicely i think we uh, send in everything actually and uh see what maybe not the devotee but now maybe i do give up the glide master just because of what it implies about what the masker worm does after i did want to fly stuff but uh given that they've added the ogre to the board here and they have all these three toughness, sending in uh, some damage to then have the Masker Worm clean up seems great. And we're not gonna send the devotee so that they know that um, this isn't some trick, like we can't send the devotee because I don't want it dead. And they didn't fall for that. Kind of just makes it actually me, makes me want to just play the crack in here. I'll just play Kraken. At some point, they got to do something. And if they want to kill the Kraken first. That's going to be nice for them. If we tap it down, obviously that's tough. Um, <clears throat> rise again. No mana, unfortunately. Would the um, We can attack with it, though. No, it's a uh, spell or ability. I think we even send the Kraken. With the Rise again, we just decline and uh, send in everything except the Devotee. And they can uh, put C Warden on Kraken and, and they bounce off. It's not a... It's not unfortunately gonna kill it. But they're worried. Maybe they'll just take it all here. Okay, I like this. We can split up this damage to make a really nice Masker Worm here getting the ogre and the spinner having a point of damage on them. Uh, I don't... Wait, can I go, like, gameplay? 
Okay, auto assign combat damage is off, good. So then we want those in front. I'm gonna put this, just in case I screw this up, at least I want the ogre dead. But I, I'm not planning to screw it up. Yeah, it didn't even matter. Like, we kill the ogre, put one damage here. Although we, um... We, we have to kill it, huh? Yeah, we don't get the Kraken... We don't get the Massacre Worm damage out of it. We do get a dead spinner, though. Oh, that's right. It doesn't work that way anymore. I'm being old school about it, huh? And if, so if you put four... Yeah, again, the Warden doesn't die, so we'll do it this way. And we Worm, and then have the Rise again. I'm going to double block. Uh, if this is a gigant, a, a plus four, plus four blowout, that's sad. But we do get the rise again. So I'm going to try and take this trade. I'd be really nervous about this double block if we didn't have the rise again. But the rise again is a good backup plan. Uh, maybe we just go for, um, cause we can even go sack vessel to village rights, rise again vessel and just make a five, five flyer that tries to get there. And yeah, let's send the one, one. I mean, they just block with the uh, vine probably, but we get the, uh, we get the lifelink out of it. Okay. They're going for that. That's fine too. Yeah, Kraken is interesting because it does do the tapping thing. But I'm going to go uh, against Red-Green, assume that 5-5 five, five Flyer is pretty good. Yeah, right. I guess Master Room just gets uh, flying anyway, right? But it doesn't do... Is it just a little better? Master Room is a 6-5 to the Vessel's 5-5. Five, five. Well, Slag is true. But six is more than five. That's true. Let's go for the worm. Fancy play syndrome to go for the uh, flyer. Kraken just win, but again, as people are saying, Masker Worm has other text that makes uh, makes stuff real tough on him. And now, yeah, it's good game because we just get to fly over. So there you go. I do my hair toss, check my nails, baby. How you feeling? There were a lot of avenues to win there. Our, our win percentage was extremely high. I don't know if any of those little... Uh, it, there was a lot of lines people were coming up with to optimize that situation. I honestly don't know which one was the 99%er versus the 98%er or whatever. Um, so maybe there was a slightly better line there, but it felt like the classic Jay Schneider all roads lead to situation. Good game, man, Thrill. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty good, but right, I forced you to do some blocks that just made it still vulnerable. All right, so I've got the win for the week. Good game, chat. My streak is back.
No blue yet, but I like this start. We get uh, Scoured Barons, ETB tapped to start, and we do have Grasp and Devotee to play, so we're going to keep. Yeah, we've been pretty lucky. The worm has been pretty near the top of our deck so far. Here's these new basics. I gotta finish up the uh, this new event that gets you. Oh, hello. Can I? There you go. Thank you. Shouldn't have been that hard. Could have grasped while shields were all down, but I'm not sure I want to grasp the glide master. I think I'm going to take two and see what else they offer. Arcanist. So we could grasp. We could also just pass devotee and then has have grasp make zombie next turn. I like that better for the current spot. It's not like we're under a lot of pressure. So I'm going to be patient with that. But we do need uh, three black sources. So I'm playing an island now, but I got to play that swamp next turn to be able to go grasp and pay devotee mana. Curious to see if they send the glide master on the bluff slash maybe they have a feat or whatever. I'm certainly not blocking. We got our plan. My hope is that cheese taps down below uh, two so that we're not worried about feet disrupting our plans. Chat, trying to understand how banding works, and uh, <laughs> I salute you. Hey, it's Dub. We're gonna try and beat that Dub with our grasp plus a block. That takes away our whole big plan of getting a... Um... Oops, sorry. Uh, I'll play this anyway. Um, well, we'll set it up. Like, I was going to grasp and then get the zombie. And we could do that. But I think we want to pass and uh, try to get the no zombie result here against Arcanist. But now they've got uh, feet mana again, potentially. Yeah, I'm probably going to... We could just rain and get Kraken back. And that might be better because that doesn't really matter about the feet. But I'm going to start by trying for the feet plan. And, or, or not the feet plan. I'm going to I'm gonna draw out the feet if they've got it. And if they have it... Great, we don't block, and then we have a we can still do stuff for next turn. But I'm gonna uh, draw draw the, what they've got out here. I'm expecting feet. Oh darn it! I was silly. That was my bad. I say I gotta say nice. I screwed it up. I needed to... Nor so, um, the reason I did it that way, though, because my heuristic for that type of sequencing is that uh, if they do have the feet, then I really don't want to block with my devotee, right? So the, the, the sequencing that got me there historically is needing to see if they have the response before you commit to the block. So I went with that heuristic in it, and it hurt me. Uh, but we're going to rain now and uh, try to get there on Kraken tapping. So I, it was a mistake, but at least you can see where my thinking was and what my mentality is heuristically in that spot. Uh, but let's go island. And actually with the instant nature, we could wait and make him nervous, but I'm just going to do it now. We may find something to do for one. All right, nice. So Eliminate takes care of the Arcanist and punishes the dub anyway, provided they're out of uh, feet. We'll discard. Uh, we don't need another planes. We only have one white spell literally in the deck. 
And I'm not blocking with a devotee. So we're going to send. Battlements will be fine if they don't come up with another land, because then at least we know we're, uh, we're not going to get got by feet, which looks like we're safe on. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get to do a two spell, but we effectively get a two spell because we get to make a zombie here. And I'm going to, at nine life, stay back on D, especially with the battlements with the easy no-brainer block. We get to uh, bring back our Eliminate, or our Rain, or our Grasp. A lot of good targets for the Dowser. With one, two, three, four, five, six mana currently, we play a seventh, and the Dowser can get back and immediately cast an Eliminate or a Grasp. So those are high-priority targets for the Dowser. That being said, uh, drawing three more cards and discarding some land seems pretty great, too. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, shipwreck, get the Eliminate, and get that Glide Master out of here. If we lose here to flying, that'll be silly when we can do this. Uh, eliminate. More reliable. Doesn't matter what they do to its power or toughness. Not that they have anything for one white, but you know. Nothing to rise, but we'll play this Kraken, and maybe it will become something that rises. Looks like uh, Double Strike, two power Double Strike could trade for the zombie. We're fine with that. We're going to swing everything and then um, drop some stuff after combat. Uh, dead to removal, well, if they had not blocked, I would consider that. Could have just played less stuff to get a, a zombie, frankly, but I like having this tapping out. It'll be good for us. And if they kill it, we have the double rise. Hello! Well... What we need to do is draw. I guess we need to race a Baneslayer Angel <laughs> somehow. Uh, but I guess we're just dead to a Baneslayer attacking for six. So I think we're, we're toast. Um, well, we lost a Baneslayer. Eh, that's the trouble with bombs. They take a, an interesting magic game and uh, make it less so sometimes. Well, honestly, if uh, I, I disagree, <laughs> uh, well, no, it's true. I, I'm not uh, like I'm not saying woe is me. I'm just making a game design comment. Regardless of what side of the bomb you're on, it doesn't. It it can take a interesting magic game and make it under interesting, right? No, no, please. Please, this is not me complaining about losing to a Baneslayer Angel. This is me making a game design observation that there's uh, pros and cons of stupid bombs because they uh, they make for exciting comebacks, but they 
can render magic games from interesting to uninteresting. That's all. Uh, and that, that being said, I believe we are dead, right? So is there anything we can do? Like if we, uh, if we attack and no, I think there's just nothing we can do. Oh no, maybe, maybe if they decide that the battlements has to, uh, block a dowser or a kraken. Yeah. If they chump, we could, that, that's the, that's our only hope. So if cheese chumps, we have a chance. If cheese does not chump, we'll scoop it up. All right, flip. It's Ninja. I forget Flip's name. I got to go look it up. What is it? Vampire. I know it's some creature type. <laughs> Vampirage. Oops. Yes, what we do in the shadows is funny. I used that song in my uh, theme week of great original songs that were later used for TV show themes. We'll keep, we got our stupid bomb. So we'll try to make an interesting magic game uninteresting. There's that ridiculously late hound double drawing. I'm so screwed. On the draw with no two drop against Boros aggro that drops a hound master on two after a shield mate on one. Well, we sure need this worm. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> We might be dead before we can resolve this, but if we can resolve this and he doesn't do something like uh, put plus one, plus one counters on the team, it could be very good for us. <laughs> we aren't mostly dead already. All right. Your friend here is only mostly dead. Uh, let's see. Barons is funny. We're going to drop the devotee and snap block. Although, let's see. I guess we snap block the shield mate. We'll see. Well, what was I saying about that card wrecking us? I think that's really, truly, like, nearly GG. Oh, frick you, Mir. I mean, there's a read that he's got uh, shock, but still. Got to do this now and hope it lives. It's our only chance. I, I think they've got shock and we're dead, but uh, this is our chance.
Mike talking about your odds of winning on the play versus the draw, I believe. Some nonsense here. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's lethal. So we are just putting a spot of forced chump. Fun police got us, but I got you this week, chat. Yeah, Mama's the saddest because, like, she gets nothing. Nothing! You all get nothing! Well, Flip, that was not super interesting. <laughs> that was just uh, uh, trashing. Why do you think this was 3 3 1? Well, too bad. David says, uh, here's a question extending our previous discussion on user agency and the client. If you were able to select heads or tails at the beginning of the match, would people complain about the system putting them on the draw too often? Uh, people complain about any randomization in any video game. My first rule of video game design or first rule uh, first rule of the video game industry any game with overt randomization and a forum has a thread about the broken shuffler 100 percent. yeah flip i don't know when you got that stupid hound master but when we passed it like pack one pick eight or something it hurt my soul it was like well we're gonna lose to the uh, boros aggro deck in this <laughs> in this draft hopefully we can get four wins elsewhere crazy flip crazy good work Yeah, it sounds like you had the deck of the draft, depending on how many doggies you had to back those hound masters up, but that was silly. It's funny, you'll watch the replay, but I'm like, well, because we had Massacre Worm in hand flip, and I was like, well, we lose to plus one, plus one to team, because then Massacre Worm doesn't do its job. And, and also we drew, I don't know if you had a shock in hand flip, but we had uh, um, on turn three, we drew whatever. And on turn four, we drew the mirror. So if we had just, uh, if we had, I don't know if you had the shock for the mirror, but if you didn't, we did have, uh, uh, we would have gone mirror and then Masker Worm on turn four. So we had Masker Worm on four with uh, one mirror draw sooner. I see it. I got to finish my talking, though. Here you go. And like I said, I... Oh, I'm in the wrong place for that. Uh, I will I will sort out my, uh, my channel points queue over the weekend. And starting next week, hopefully people will not have to remind me anymore about... Uh, about missed memes and whatnot. But anyway, here you go.
a turn three, a turn four worm would have saved us had had it not been for the plus one. But that's my point. I mean, we had we had two two things that needed to go right, and we almost had it, but instead we just got rolled. Yeah, emotes were already on. There was nothing. There's nothing for me to to do on that redemption. Oh, can you refund? I didn't know we could refund hat. Yeah, if I could, if you can give a refund, that's cool. But I maybe you're joking. I didn't I didn't think there was refunds. Kind of seems like a silly feature. Ah, sure. Really? <laughs> you can give refunds, huh? I guess so, Razor. I guess so. All right, everyone. Chill. Still need they, they need to give me better controls over when and how much people can use channel points or the whole system becomes silly. All right. Um, well, we're not at uh, noon yet. Let me I've been dawdling here. I should say goodbye to YouTube. Sorry for that. YouTube friends. Thanks for hanging out for the little denouement here and hope you enjoyed that one and we'll catch you next week.